Let's go to our Father in an open prayer. Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we are truly blessed to be able to gather in your presence once again on this first day of the week that you have given to us. Father, for this cooler day that you have blessed us with that brings a bit of respite from the heat of the previous days. Father, we are always so grateful and blessed by the many blessings that you daily bestow on us, Father. For all the good things that you give to us. Father, for the peace that we are able to enjoy in this country, whereas there are so many people at this time facing not peace, Father, but a terrible war. So, Father, we bring before you the people of the Ukraine. We ask you that you may be with them, especially our brothers and sisters, so far away from us, but yet so close to us, Father. We ask that sanity may prevail, that the invaders might come to Come to their senses, Father. 
realize what they are doing, the lives that they are taking, the lives that they are disrupting. For the almost the whole world that they are disrupting. Father, they also, amongst our own number, we think of Ismarelva. <clears throat> Father, continually fighting a battle every day of our life. We ask you that you may continue giving us strength, Father, to be able to endure not only the chemo that she has to undergo at the moment, Father, but also to remember that you are always at her side, that she can gain strength from you, Father. Then, Lord, we also bring before you Rory and grateful that he is feeling better this day, but continually bringing him before you. Father, as we know that we do not know what tomorrow may bring, we continually ask you that you may be with him also by his side, Father that he can lean on your strength and steadfastness. Father, that you will be with everyone present here this morning. Father, that you will guide us in everything that we do, that our worship to you may be acceptable in your sight. And this is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Standing on the promises of Christ my King,
God, I know, is everywhere. But He likes His people to be together on the first day of the week. We've been talking for a couple of weeks now, and I'm hoping somehow that it is stuck in your mind. We've been talking about the fear of God. If I don't fear God, then I can do what I like in the world. I can stay away from church, I can lie, I can steal, I can do what I like. Because I don't fear God. And then we spoke about the faith and the belief and the trust in God. Because if I do believe and I do have the faith in God and I do trust God, then I can actually believe His Word. And His Word says, do not be anxious for tomorrow. I will take care of you. I will take care of you today. I will take care of you tomorrow. This morning we're going to look at a scripture which talks about the fullness of God. And what does it actually mean? I find in my own life, in past experiences, I will sometimes hear a lesson that I will think, hey, I've got to work on that. I've got to work on that. There's definitely a hollow in my life that I need. I need to go and fix something. Come Wednesday. And I cannot remember what the lesson is about. And if the preacher to ask me the next Sunday, can you remember what I preached about last week? And I'd have to scratch my head. And that became a worrisome thing for me because it meant that what the preacher said, I didn't really go and put into practice in the week. I would walk out the door and say, oh, that's a great thing. Thank you, preacher. And then I can't remember what he said. And that says something about my spirituality, in my opinion. Ephesians 3, you got it all on the, on the computer. Ephesians 3, 14 to 18 reads, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in the inner man. Remember that what we spoke about? That we inside of us, We've all lost loved ones. I think I heard we talking early on about a loved one that he lost, and I know unto them. We all, we have some empty, empty chairs here of loved ones that should have been here today, but they've gone to heaven. But what do you do in those times? How do you handle those tough times? How strong is your inner strength? And that says, verse 17, So that Christ may dwell in your hearts, through faith. That is the reason for the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, to be inside of us so that Christ may dwell inside of us so that when I walk out this building this afternoon and somebody asks me tonight, what did the preacher talk about? And I can't remember. That means something is wrong. Something is wrong. Verse 17 again. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, which is trust, and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of Christ's love, basically. I am of your opinion. Me? I'm, you're walking with your God. I often wonder genuinely whether I really appreciate what Christ did for me. We say it, and we will have it in our prayers, and we're going to have the Lord's table in a minute. But do I genuinely appreciate what Christ did for me? Now, according to that scripture, Christ was one, Christ can only dwell in my heart if I have faith in Him. If I don't have faith in Christ, what's he doing then? If I don't have trust in Christ, what's he doing then? If I don't love Jesus Christ, what am I doing here this morning? Those are questions, that, that, those are strong questions. Those are strong statements I've just made. Because it can, again, I will say my life 
The reality of life is I can say things, but my life shows differently. And so the question, does my life show that I have faith in Christ, that I, have, that I trust Him and that I love Him? Let's look at Christ's love. John 10, 14, 18. I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Let's just stop there for a second. He's talking to the Jews. I have come for you are a part of my fold. My flock. If it wasn't for the next verse, you and I are wasting our time. Then we could just as well be in India, Japan or something and go, and I don't, I don't mean this in a rude sense, but go and worship the Buddha. That, that's what it is. The next scripture says, and verse 16, and I have other sheep. That's you, that's me. He's now talking about us. And I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they shall hear my voice and they shall uh, uh, become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. It is a calculated decision that God and His Son Jesus Christ took. Because he says in verse 18, no one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it back again. So we must understand. This was not just a by chance thing. God the Father. Jesus Christ, His Son, they knew, they knew the hurt, they knew the horror of what was going to take place when Jesus Christ, the Son, hangs on the cross. They knew what that meant. That's why it said, God turned His back on His Son. He turned His back on the sin that Christ took on his shoulders. I said it to Walter the other day, Christ himself can't become sin. He's too holy, he's too pure. When you go do washing, you take the washing in your hand and you take the washing, you throw it in the tub and dry. You don't become sin, but you take the washing and the washing is clean. And Christ's blood, as we will do a little later on, Christ's blood cleans the washing. But they knew the costs. They knew the costs of Christ hanging on the cross and they were bucking him. Saying, oh, you've done all the oh, you can't get you can't get yourself down from the cross. They knew the mocking that was going to take place. There are people outside there today that mock Jesus Christ by staying away. By not thinking, oh, you know, who, who is Jesus Christ? That's why we're different. I said to my wife this morning coming to church, I cannot imagine anything worse than thinking that when I die, that's it. I'm not dead. There's nothing. How negative is that? Through the love of God, the Father and His Son, Jesus, we are part of this world. Let's read in 1 John, before we put it up, before we put it up, right up. there's going to be a statement that is going to be made on this particular scripture. And I'm asking myself the question on the scripture, am I a liar? If I ask you, are you, are you liars? Pretty sure all of us can say, no wait, no wait. It's simply to say to me, am I a liar? I say, no. Let's read 1 John 4, 20, 21. If someone says, I love God and hates or dislikes his brother, he is a liar. You know what that says to me? I have got to love Shirley. Might be tough. <laughs> I've got to love Shirley. I have got to love my sister, my brother. Otherwise, God says, 
says, you're a liar. And he goes on and he says, For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who, lo who loves God should love his brother also. Teresa often said to me, you know, I know the Bible says I'm supposed to love you, but I don't like you right now. Yesterday was one of those days. But the word says to me, if you do not love your brother, your sister, God says to me, I will not love you. Your choice. Your choice. Remember that? Many shall come to me on that day. The scriptures are here to help us to go to heaven. Because there with God is, there is love. There is love. And if I don't learn how to love on earth, how am I possibly going to learn to love up there? You know, there's a, a, in Matthew, I'm not sure if I gave this to you right now, I think I might have, Matthew 5, 23, 24. It talks about the offering at, at the table. When we bring our gifts in the Old Testament, the New Testament, when we uh, not remember, remember Christ's death on the cross and we bring ourselves to Christ, that particular scripture says that if there's a problem with the reason myself, then there's no point in partaking of the offering until we have cleared up. What is between us? In other words, what I'm trying to say is this. We are here for a reason this morning. We could have gone fishing, could have gone play golf, could have done whatever. But we're coming here to show God, Lord, <clears throat> we understand your word. Your word says to me, says to us this morning, if we do not adhere to your word, we could be lost. <coughs> so it's a very serious business. It's a very serious business. Otherwise, then he shall knock on that door and I will say to them, go away from me. You never took my word seriously. But now you expect to come into the party. And so I ask the question, is my Christianity, I'm asking you, is your Christianity based on a deep-rooted love for Christ? You know, if, you, if, you, if I look at my garden, and I look at the trees and the flowers, and the trees and the flowers will show me <coughs> What food the soil has to be able that the roots of this tree is bringing up out of the soil and I look at the leaves and the flowers and they bloom. And then I will look at another plant that looks like this. And then you look at the soil and you understand why. And it's the same as a Christian. We are fed, listen carefully, we are fed from the word of grace and mercy. I can take this. I can open it anywhere. Anywhere. Doesn't matter where. I, I can open it anywhere. And I can read the Bible as it says, boom, boom, boom. And then I look at Christ. And I, I look at Christ's life. Then he goes to somebody caught in the act of adultery. He doesn't even look up, he writes on the ground. And he makes a statement that says, you who have no sin, let you be the first to throw the rock. And you know what the strange part is? They go away from the oldest to the youngest. Because the older you are, the longer you're a Christian. You realize, I also have sin. And you walk away. And I remember a time in my life, coming into the church, 1975. Anyone in this room? <coughs> and somebody said to me once, Christ had mercy. And this is what, as I've got older in 
my life as far as a Christian is concerned. I've come to understand, Daddy, you lack mercy. Christ gave you grace. He gave you mercy. And it is through your spirit that will show whether you appreciate Christ or not. We know what Galatians 5, 20, what's it, 22, 23 says? If my spirit, or, or let, let's put this right, if my love for Jesus Christ is the way it is supposed to be, grounded in this incredible appreciation of what Christ did for me, then my spirit will show love, joy, peace, happiness, gentleness, Forgiveness, self-control. But if it is if it is rooted in my life, is rooted in myself. And as I see myself, it will show the spirit will show falseness, selfishness. Therese gave me this this morning. I thought it is beautiful. She said, Well, not she. <laughs> the statement says. God's advice to us, never look down on someone unless you're trying to help them out. Think about that. Never look down on someone unless you're trying to help them out. So my question I ask myself, is my appreciation of Christ the overriding thought in my mind? <coughs> is my love for Christ deep, deep? <coughs> what happens? What happens when a strong wind comes along? And you see the trees that are not deep rooted, but they look beautiful, they look lovely. And then the wind comes along, the tough times come along, and the wind blows the tree over. And then you look at the, at the roots, and you can see the roots are shallow. There's no depth to the roots. What happens? The tree blows over. Now for all you parents who've got youngsters, there they're sitting, there they are. There's a saying, if I have to explain to you what love is, then you've never understood it. You've never been in love. Because what is love? One day, I didn't want to say grace, and co. We'll come home to the parents and the parents will say, what's wrong? Say, no, 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 nothing there, kid. And they're in love. They may have found a boy that they like or a girl that they like. And they are in love, but you cannot explain it. That is the love that I'm talking about as far as Christ is concerned. Somebody outside must be able to see that you're different. What? What's wrong? I don't know. But you are different. And then somebody should say, oh, I know. He's in love. I know it is a difficult thing for us to accept it in, in, in a correct sense. I am in love with Christ. And I mean that in the absolute purest way I could possibly say. I love my Lord because of what he did for me. Ephesians 3 verse 19 And to know the love of Christ which surpasses understanding or rather surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Question what is meant by the fullness of God? What is meant by that? It says here to me, and to know, here it starts, the love of Christ, which surpasses, surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. So immediately we already have a little bit of a, a clue. I need to be filled with the love of Christ. This is God. Remember? Uh, what's it, Isaiah 14 verse 26 has nobody ever told you do you not know who I am this God that sits about the bulbs of the earth he gave his son and now he looks at each one and he looks at each one as we're going along here he looks at each one and says I wonder how much they love my Christ I wonder how much they love my son 
What would you give yourself out of 10 this morning? How much do you love Christ? You don't have to tell anybody. You just tell God. How much? How much do you love Christ? You see, if you say 10 out of 10, then somebody must be able to see the Spirit. The Spirit of Christ just coming out of you. But you see, sometimes, and I remember when I came to the church, 1975. I had a knowledge. I had a knowledge. I studied the Word. I didn't know anything about the Church of Christ. I was in the Methodist Church at that stage. And I didn't know. And then I started studying the Word. And boy, did I become full of myself. I've got the knowledge. Hey, what do you need? You need wrong. And I became almost this legalistic Christian. And as the years have gone by, we've been in the church now, what, I think 46 years, grace and mercy and love has taken the place of, I've got all the knowledge. I, I've had it through circumstances, we all have had it through circumstances, do we, yellow work, that you've had to, your spirit has had to go through in. Tough times. Tough times. People, this is Marilda. She's my hero. Sorry, Therese. Esmeralda is my hero. Every day she struggles with her cancer. Every day. I get up in the morning and I put my knees a bit sore to me. And if Esmeralda was next to me, she'd say, Oh, Sham, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's sore. And she means it. And she's battling with her life. Her life every day. And when one is full of oneself, one forgets that your, your brother, your sister, is going through tough times because you have to worry about yourself. I've come to understand this. It's something that lacks that has been lacking in my life for many years. I'm slowly trying to get over it. Love my brother, love my sister, as I love Christ, as I love God. If I fail in that, God says to me, you rely on. Because you cannot say to me, you love me, and you don't love my brother or my sister. They are my children. If you want to be part of the foe that my, Christ, my son died for you, and he says, I've come to gather my foe. Do you want to be part of the foe? Yes, Lord. Then love my brother, love my child, love my daughter, love my son. Ephesians 3, verse 20. And I've, my heading is, when, when we love God's Son, God goes beyond what we ask. Now to Him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. To Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, abundantly beyond all that we ask. What do you ask God in the morning when you wake up? What do you ask Him? Father, please watch over me. Please watch over my family. We have people in our family who are battling. They're battling physically. Father, there are people who are battling spiritually. And the Lord says, Son, do you know who I am? Has nobody ever told you? I cannot lose. God cannot lose. But I could lose, on my own, I could lose for sure. So I need to understand the scriptures. I need to understand that God is a God of... He stands fast to His Word. Make no mistake. God says, this is what I've asked you, this is what I expect of you. 
And now you look at the character of God. And God says, but for you to get to where I am, where my son is, I want you to love. I want you to love your sisters, your brothers. I want you to love them. You see, because if you don't love them, how do you expect me to love you? God is all powerful. And I want to make a statement now. Walter and myself chatted about this the other day again. I want us to unleash God's Holy Spirit in our lives. I don't want our lives to be over. Oh, this is me. I don't talk to my sister or my brother. I don't talk about the Holy Spirit. It, it's a personal thing. It's not a personal thing. It is God's Spirit that He has given to us so that we can talk to each other, tell each other about, I must tell you what happened yesterday. I was sitting in the garden and I could just feel God's presence in my life. There was just this warm feeling. God was so close. We don't talk about it. Why not? Why not? That's what it's all about. The word is given to us. Who gave Sally the word? Who gave Shirley the word? Who gave me the word? Who gave you the word? Because you want to see somebody else happy. You want to give them the greatest gift ever given to anybody. The Son of Jesus Christ. And their spirit. Their spirit. You see, the Spirit of Christ can change your life. I'm going to say that again. The Spirit of Christ can change your habits. Can change your habits. Can change your habits. You can become this cold, miserable person that might know the Word. You look warm to others. You look warm to Christ. And Christ can change that. He can change that. I made a statement here. If people look at us, can they see something of Christ, God, in our lives? Can they see it? Grace, when you go to work and go to varsity, wherever you travel around, your friends on the beach, wherever, can they see something of Christ in my life? <clears throat> or, or, or am I just absolutely, uh, what's the word, perfect, perfect underground Christian? I've, I've, I've perfected the art of being an underground Christian and nobody knows about me. And the Lord says, and, and, and who are you? Oh Lord, I, I'm Danny. Uh, Danny, yes. Uh, tell me something about your life. Well Lord, I was the preacher. I was the preacher in your church. I would ride over myself and, and my friends. He says, but I don't remember you. Lord, how can you say that? But weren't you the perfect underground Christian? That my spirit never ever came out in your life. Nobody saw it. And so, is the Holy Spirit evident in my life? We spoke about the fullness of God. It's a bubbling waterfall of Holy Spirit that does not come out in my life. I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm, I'm just another person walking around in the world. And nobody knows I'm a Christian. I know Gussie works with the workers on the farms and all. Does everybody know I'm a Christian? Do my friends know I'm a Christian? The love of Christ, the Spirit within me, am I walking with Christ?
Christ, am I acting like a Christian? Brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask this question again. Are we guilty when the Spirit, when the Spirit within me wants to come out and talk to others, talk to God, talk, do I hold it in? And I say, Spirit, you don't come out, you, you, you stay right there. And God says to me, you fool, I gave you the Holy Spirit so that you might share the Holy Spirit with others. I, I don't know what's going on in your lives this morning. I know that Louise here and Kalita, I can't remember the other ones, I'm a little sweet, can you remember me? I, I don't know what's going on in your mind right now. God knows. God knows right now whether we are guilty of keeping the Spirit the fullness of God says, if you love my son Jesus Christ, and you take our spirit, and you take it into your lives, and then with the spirit, you know, the heart unfolds with the mon fun word, in other words, what's in the heart will come out. Let the spirit of God, of Christ, just overwhelm you. And let the people see there is something of us in your life. Let them see. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. Romans 8 verse 1 There is therefore 
Now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 1, 18-19 Know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb, without blemish or spot. 1 John 5, verse 4 For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. And I'm sure all of us know this one. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 O oh death, where is your victory? O oh death, where is your sting? The resurrection reveals to believers the true way to life. Those who think life comes from avoiding suffering and hardship we are all shown to be wrong. Jesus' life teaches that the way to a full life is through service, hardship, pain, and suffering. Jesus' resurrection shows that death is not the end. Jesus, Jesus shows victory by being a selfless servant. This is the hope found in the resurrection of Jesus. The point of the resurrection is not just for us to feel good that Jesus rose from the dead. It has to make an impact in our lives. It has to be life changing. We are to appreciate the fact that Jesus rose from the dead more than anything else. More than believing in ourselves, more than anything we think we know. But the resurrection is a very, very important part of our faith. Will we respond with faith? Looking to Jesus as our Saviour and following His path of shame, carrying our cross with Him. The, the message of the Gospel and the message of the Resurrection is this. Do not fear, only believe. Trust that Jesus has overcome death so that we have nothing to fear if we give our lives to Him. But perfect love in our Lord casts out fear, for we know that we are with Him. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything for us, but we must come to Him in faith. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, as we see our Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour on the cross. We can only but say thank you, Lord. For you have given us the greatest gift man can ever receive. Even though we don't deserve, deserve it, Lord, you have blessed us with the blood of the Lamb. The perfect sacrifice. You have, you have blessed us with a friend in Jesus, laying down his life for us. Lord, as we, we break bread this morning, which symbolizes the body of Christ, which strengthens us through your word, through your spirit. We ask, Lord, that you shall bless each one of us for the week that lies ahead. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
you have shown the ultimate love. You have blessed us with the ultimate love. Our Savior was pierced for our transgressions. His blood flowed for us. The precious blood of the Lamb, the life-giving blood of Christ, with which He has purchased us. And we now belong to Him. Our Lord and Savior, being the perfect sin offering for us, taking away our sins. Lord, we may not all understand it, but as we learn your word and see your ways, help us to appreciate it more and more every day. The ultimate sacrifice for us. We are not worthy, Lord, yet you have shown us the perfect love. We pray this Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is all
Shall we pray? Almighty God, loving Father, Lord, we know that you are the Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. Yet, you love us without end. And Lord, that is why we are here today. To worship you. To show our love. To show our appreciation. To show, Lord, that, yes, at times we fall short of your will. We stumble, we fall. But you are always there to pick us up. And that's why we are here, Lord. To, to follow the example of Jesus. To, to try and be the best we can be, Lord. To glorify your name. Lord, we, we ask and pray that our worship unto you this morning is acceptable that that our hearts Lord will be full with your love and may explode with worship unto you always putting you first but it's so easy for us Lord to, to just want to move you to the sideline at times and and just give you the crumbs and think that you must be satisfied with it. No, Lord. Forgive us. Strengthen us. Help us. That we can be, like Paul says, we need to be a living sacrifice. That we will always put you first and that we will always do your will. Father, Thank you for this blessed opportunity to be here this morning with fellow brothers and sisters. To worship you, Lord. We think of the people in the Ukraine going through very, very difficult times. Some of our brothers, sisters in the church battling. We think of this around the Lord. What an example to us all. And we can only but bring it up to you, Lord, and ask that you should look after. Look after all of us, Lord. Touch our hearts. And we ask like what David asked, creating us a new and pure heart. Once again, Lord, thank you for this blessed opportunity. To be here and to know that you are with us. That we can, to the best of our ability, glorify you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.